questions at that time. With that, Dr. Gothard. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. I am St. Paul Public Schools Superintendent Joe Gothard. Earlier this morning, I received information that the St. Paul Federation of Educators were filing an intent to strike today. Just before noon, I received the official intent to strike notice from the State Bureau of Mediation Services. A 10-day window will take effect, providing time for the district and SPFE to continue negotiating towards a contract settlement. Once the 10-day window has expired, SPFE has a legal right to strike. The first day of this action could take place on Tuesday, March 10th. I cannot be more clear by stating my disappointment that it has come to this. We have incredible students, staff, and families, and we depend on them each day to open our doors for learning, growth, and most of all, community. I also know that this decision is not taken lightly by SPFE, representing 3,500 teachers, education support professionals, and school and community services personnel. We remain in mediation and have 10 days to settle this contract and avoid a strike. Messaging to our parents and caretakers that school will be open on March 10th should be the mutual goal for all of us. I thought I would take you through a brief timeline of the district's negotiations with SPFE. We began on May 30th, 2019 Negotiations began and proposals were exchanged. Proposals were shared in front of large groups with several FT SPFE bargaining team members and guests presenting. The district also shared our guiding principles for negotiating with our 20 plus bargaining units. We held one additional meeting over the summer on July 25th. At the September 12, 2019 negotiations, we shared our financial parameters for negotiations and they included a 1.5 increase in the 1920 contract year and a 2% increase in the 2021 contract year. This is a $9.6 million investment over the course of two years for wages and benefits. This amount does not include the approximately $5 million annually that is budgeted for cost of living adjustments. This is often referred to as steps in lanes. This potential amount varies for each employee. Throughout sessions August through November, SPFE put 30 proposals on the table for bargaining. These were well thought out and aimed at providing support for students and staff. I felt it was important for the district to understand the entire financial ask before our team began responding to proposals and especially those that were costly. With the exception of those that were primarily contract language only. On November 26, 2019, the district was given a notice that the St. Paul Federation of Educators was filing for mediation with the State Bureau of Mediation Services. We scheduled our first mediation session on December 12, 2019. At that first session, SPFE gave proposal number 31, a request for increases to wages and benefit contributions. To date, the open proposals from SPFE have, costed, have been costed at $53 million in annual investments with an increase of more than 400 full-time equivalent positions. The district has introduced 16 proposals through the course of negotiations. Currently, we have 11 proposal tentative agreements with 38 proposals remaining open. I've requested of my team mediation sessions scheduled 24 hours a day and seven days a week to reach a contract settlement. St. Paul Public Schools staff, students, families, and this greater community who have reached out to me have asked me to do whatever I can to avoid a strike. Now I'd like to share just some additional information with you about some of the terms that I've mentioned and perhaps give you a greater context of some of the other factors we are considering as we're engaged in negotiations at this time. First, it is no surprise that St. Paul Public Schools has experienced declining enrollment. In fact, those numbers since the 15-16 school year are approximately 2,000 students as we look at our formal October 1st enrollment counts. We have also invested in SPFE staff last year following a successful referendum and also doing so with the guidance of SPPS Achieves, our district strategic plan. And I'll just highlight some of the positions that we invested in last spring for this year's budget. Counselors, middle school teachers, uh, 15 English language teachers, one English language English learner counselor, 
20 staff in college career readiness positions, and these are counselors, work-based learning coordinators, and career pathway teachers. 14 additional classroom teachers to try to keep allocation below class sizes to build enrollment. And $3.3 million in individual site level special education resources for our students. This investment totals $11 million in more than 50 positions added to our uh, school district for our work this year and into the future. I have to pause for a moment and share the underfunding of education in the state of Minnesota and it, the direct impacts that it has on St. Paul Public Schools. The last time the state adjusted state aid to school districts to match inflation was 2003. Since that time, we've seen a gap grow to $640 per student. In real dollars, this would add $25 million in revenue to St. Paul Public Schools. $25 million each year had that amount been adjusted with inflation. The underfunding of special education and related services as well. In 1975, the Individual Disabilities Education Act was passed and the federal government said, we will contribute up to 40% to help states provide these required services to students. Services and supports that they absolutely deserve and supports that we believe in as a school district. Sadly, the amount that we get, uh, that gets reimbursed from the federal government to the state has ranged 10 to 15%. And what that means for St. Paul Public Schools is we are forced to use $40 million from our general funds to cover the reimbursements that we must provide those services by law. We have a growing cost of serving students who qualify for English learner support as well. Uh, something that's near and dear to the heart of the St. Paul community and especially to our school district. Families that we feel honored to provide an excellent education. Families who provide us so much in terms of our learning about what education um, across the globe means in, in today's society. And that too, $13 million is used from our general funds uh, to cover the costs that it takes to provide access and support to our very deserving English language uh, students. So those three areas, state aid gap, the underfunding of special education, and the growing cost of serving our students who qualify for English learner support, total $80 million. $80 million each year that St. Paul Public Schools and plenty of districts around us could use to benefit their systems and strengthen the education they're able to offer their community. I also want our community to know that I've been present during negotiations since May 30th, and far before that as we were planning uh, for this round of negotiations. And truthfully, and I think this might be a surprise to some, I have observed regularly respectful dialogue, passionate testimonies, with some infrequent agreements as we collectively consider 47 proposals. But I think our community would be a little bit surprised to know that it isn't this, uh, there isn't this great feeling of animus in the room as we uh, look for how we can work together and collaborate. We just haven't moved quickly enough, and we haven't closed the gap we have between right now what we are able to invest and what the requests are from our partners at SPFE. With that, I would like to turn it over to the St. Paul Public Schools Board of Education Chair, Ms. Marnie Zhang. Good afternoon. My name is Marnie Zhang and I'm the Chair of the St. Paul School Board. On behalf of my colleagues on the board, I want to say that I'm proud to be a part of St. Paul Public Schools. The work our educators, staff, and leaders do with and on behalf of our students is remarkable. There is, a great, there is great work happening in each of our schools and in each classroom each day. And everyone in this room is committed to ensuring that work continues. Since the beginning of negotiations to now, my colleagues and I have heard from parents, staff, and our community about the need to ensure we meet the student needs and avoid a strike. We hear you. We all want to ensure that we provide the services and support for our students. That has been, that has been, an agreed, that has been agreed upon by everyone involved in these discussions. However, the reality is that our schools continue to be underfunded and our resources are limited. In addition, enrollment is declining in our schools. Understanding the reality of what our district is grappling with, we encourage our educators to work with our bargaining team in partnership and in collaboration to avoid a strike. 
we are in this work together as a collective community for our students. Let's work together to avoid a strike and to advocate at the state to ensure our schools are fully funded. We are stronger together. Thank you, and up next, I would like to invite Chief Turner. Good afternoon. I'm Jackie Turner, Chief Operations Officer for St. Paul Public Schools. I wanna talk briefly about the impact that this strike could have on our most important people in this room, in this community, our students and families. I wanna reiterate what Dr. Gothard has said. Our top priority is to negotiate a fair and reasonable contract. However, in the event that doesn't occur, we want our families and communities to know we will support them throughout this. And there's some important information that they should also know. All St. Paul Public Schools pre-kindergarten through 12th grade classes will be canceled. All St. Paul Public School after school activities will be canceled. All early childhood special education classes will be canceled. All adult community education classes will be canceled. The school calendar could potentially be modified and or extended. We will be able to continue varsity athletics and other Minnesota State High School League activities will continue throughout the duration of a strike. We realize that the threat of a strike provides uncertainty for our families and students. We want to make sure that we try to eliminate or minimize that uncertainty as much as possible. Therefore, we've also put in place a number of programs and supports to help our families through that. We will be opening several of our elementary schools for our kindergarten through fifth grade students on each day from 8.30 to 3 p.m. There will be safe and age-appropriate programming and activities that will be taking place at these locations. We will also be providing lunch and breakfast at those locations. These locations, we will provide transportation throughout the city to these various sites. All of this will be offered at no cost to our, our families. In addition, we will be offered at more than 20 locations breakfast and lunch for anyone in the city who's under the 18, age of 18. These pro, um, breakfasts and lunches will be offered each and every day that um, we are on strike. Again, those meals will be offered at no cost to our families. Finally, we're also working with our community partners and we appreciate them stepping up. So there will also be some opportunities for resources and other supports that will be offered for our community partners, such as the city and some of our faith-based partners that have come forward and we thank you for that. Details about these programs and actually where the sites are will be coming forth shortly. Finally, our Discovery Club, which is our fee-based program, that will also continue for our families. And those that Discovery Club program will be prioritized for the families that are currently in our fee-based program. For our secondary students, 6th through 12th grade, those students will be encouraged and supported to take their iPads home, and we will be offering appropriate online activities for them as well. Again, I want to state we are doing everything we can to avoid a strike, but in the event that a strike does occur, we wanna make sure our students, families, and communities understand and know that we are doing everything we can to support them through this unfortunate event. I'd now like to bring up Kenyatta McCarty, who is the Executive Director of our Human Resources. Good afternoon. I'm Kenyatta McCarty, Executive Director of Human Resources for St. Paul Public Schools. I want to say again, our focus is on our students. Our responsibility is to our families and our efforts are centered on negotiating through the mediation process. The Minnesota Bureau of Mediation Services has notified SPPS and SPFE that the legal right to strike begins at 12.01 a.m. on Tuesday, March 10th. As an employer of approximately 6,800 people, we have the obligation to provide timely, accurate, and factual information to all parties involved, and so I wanna provide some details today. Our employees need to know that if a strike occurs, SPFE members have the right to decide to strike or not to strike. Those who choose to strike will not be permitted into any SPPS facility. Those who choose not to strike 
will be assigned work in support of our plans for students as outlined by Chief Turner. All non-striking employees, regardless if they are SPFE members or not, are expected to report to work on day one of the strike. All employees will be receiving additional information about these and other details this afternoon if they have not already done so. I cannot overemphasize that each of us, particularly those of us on the SPPS bargaining team, are committed to negotiating in good faith within the mediation process as long as it takes to reach a settlement on the contract that is fair to SPFE, equitable with other union contracts, and is responsible to the taxpayers for St. Paul. Um, we are going to be at at least eight of our locations, and our target is to um, be able to support at least 4,000 students initially. And then as part of that negotiation process, you're also going to be part of the negotiation team? Correct. Discovery Club will be run its normal hours, which is 6.30 to 6 p.m. Well, I think it's, uh, it isn't just what the union wants. It's when you, when you look at annual um, setbacks and underfunding, the total $80 million, um, there's only so much that we can ask our local property tax payers to, to take on. Uh, so we were very thoughtful as we went out with the Board of Education um, to propose a referendum and trying to understand what is the tax tolerance for our great supportive community. Uh, so we did so in acquiring about 17 million in additional dollars. Um, but again, understanding that every year we continue to have inflation in the district as well. Um, we do, uh, we have addressed staff salaries across the board and, and try to offer um, our lowest paid staff increases. Um, so we've continued to invest in that way and invest in, in the people here. Uh, it just leaves us with very little when we're talking about adding additional staff. So some that I referred to were a result of our referendum. I think I listed about $11 million and some additional um, FTE that went to, uh, that went to our, um, you know, that, that were added for this year. Uh, but beyond that, you know, we have to look at just our cost to continue each year and, and those annual rises as well. Our general fund and capital funds are, are separate, um, so we, we, you're absolutely correct. We cannot mix capital funds for general fund purposes in, in terms of staffing and some of the student supports, and especially if it's categorical in nature and how it's accounted from the state and the federal government. I mean, additional dollars to, uh, to put on the table to say this is what could bring us together is one part, uh, but we're trying to send the message that we really do want to collaborate together in terms of what this could mean. If we want to add student support to our schools, uh, there's no better place to look than what we're doing that's successful already in you know, one of our 65, 70 buildings. We have a lot of great work going on to build on. And the other piece we have to look at is not every one of our schools needs the same things. Uh, so to look at this from an equal standpoint and adding guaranteed staffing ratios to every school um, is not a strategy that I wish to implement at this time. We have to look at where are the greatest needs and how can we provide them. And that doesn't mean that we take away from schools that don't have those needs, but at some point we have to look at the equitable distribution of resources in the district as well. So I would say that those are some of the philosophical things that we need to continue to work on 
uh, so we can get down to that exact amount that it's going to take for us to, to continue to move forward. On another topic, uh, it's Matt Zepic again at NPR News. Uh, what, if anything, uh, amid all this is the district doing to prepare for uh, the possible arrival here of the coronavirus? I want to have Is Mary here. We don't have our supervisor of health services here. We did send out a, a, a letter yesterday to staff. Um, we are heeding uh, direction from the um, uh, Minnesota Department of Health and, and other state officials, including MDE. Jessica Miller, Channel 5, again. Um, obviously, this adds another Well, not only that, but our number one strategic focus area is positive school and district culture. And we've worked really hard. In fact, I've had people say to me time after time how different things are beginning to feel. You know, we take some really good steps forward. And at our events like this, where, you know, we find ourselves as professionals in the same room um, and being divided, that make that really challenging. And I know that's felt by everyone. I mean, the um, escalation of, of advocacy you know, today was, was definitely seen by a community that, that hasn't been seen for a while. So I think all that adds into um, people's feelings about our district. Uh, we want to build St. Paul Public Schools as the number one choice in our community of a great place to learn and to grow and to be part of incredibly rich and diverse communities. And if there's anything that's going to threaten that, um, I feel obligated and responsible to try to make that better. And I would prefer that that doesn't happen at the negotiations table, but right now that's where we find ourselves and that's what our commitment is.